You're listening to a message from the Winsboro Church of Christ. This is the Winsboro.Church podcast. If you have any questions, comments, or prayer requests, you can get in touch with us at any time through our website at Winsboro.Church. We are going through the gospel story, the gospel accounts, uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, all year long. We are just getting started in Matthew. We finished up the baptism and the temptation of Jesus in Matthew. Now we are into a very famous part of Matthew, Matthew chapters 5, 6, and 7. And what I've titled it is A Crazy Life. If we p- could put ourselves in the shoes of the earliest people who heard these words of Jesus, this amazing sermon he gave while sitting up on a mountainside. Because so back then... The crowd stood up and the teacher sat down. We've kind of reversed that in our culture. but So Jesus was sitting down, but he was speaking to the crowds. But what he said, even now, if we read it honestly, is crazy. Who in the world would live like that? Who would actually follow through? Some people even think that the Sermon on the Mount... Jesus didn't really intend for us to follow it. It's just too out there. Like it's the perfect life. And Jesus is giving us the perfect life. But even Jesus maybe really didn't expect us to go that far with it. As far as his teachings that he gives us. And my rebuttal to that is, have you read the end of the Sermon on the Mount? Chapter 7. Where he says, he who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice... It's the wise man who built his house on the rock. He who just hears these words and does not put them in practice is the foolish man. So I think Jesus does intend for us to follow this amazing sermon and these amazing teachings. But let's face it, they're crazy. They are downright crazy. The Sermon on the Mount... Some people talk about being the upside-down kingdom, and I like that illustration as well. I've done that before, and I'll do it again. But for this series, and it's just this week and next week, we're going to have a guest speaker in two weeks uh, giving us a report about some missions. But for these two weeks, we'll look at the Sermon on the Mount and really challenge what we think or what we expect is normal. You know, we live in East Texas, in America, and we've got our certain expectation of what's normal. And honestly, it's pretty normal to go to church. It's pretty normal to believe in God. There are some cultures and societies around the world where it's not near as normal as it is here to go to church and believe in God. And because we've had such a long history of doing that with you know grandparents and great grandparents and, and we're blessed to live in the culture society we are, even though it's changing, but to have the heritage we have of faithfulness with our families and with our communities, it's wonderful. And we've almost normalized Christianity. And I guess these couple of sermons here, I want to challenge that and try to get it from the viewpoint of what about when Christianity was crazy? And really, if we're truly following Jesus, it still is. It shouldn't just be normal. Normal is a broken, fallen world. From Adam and Eve on, it's been normal. To die, to be sick. It's been normal to live in sin. That's what normal is when you get, I mean, people argue about, well, what's actually normal, what's not normal, and is there even a normal? And I would say, well, there's one undercurrent of normalcy that we all share. We all sin and we're all going to die. couple of exceptions in the Bible like Enoch, but he was definitely abnormal. (laughs) We face death. And we live struggling constantly with our sin. Well, some struggle, some don't, but sin is a part of our life. That's normal. Jesus says, don't be normal. Matter of fact, in Matthew chapter 7, 
Enter through the narrow gate because the gate is wide and the way is spacious that leads to destruction. Destruction is normal. Being on a path that leads to destruction with a bunch of other people. Well, all the other people, that, that's the normal way of doing things. Going with the flow. And there are many who enter through it. But how narrow is the gate and difficult the way that leads to life. And there are a few who find it. That's abnormal. Normalcy is defined by, you know, the, what are most of the people doing? That becomes the standard of normalcy. And Jesus is saying, you don't be normal. You find the narrow way and the narrow gate. And so this week, the crazy life operates by a crazy standard. And here's the standards of normalcy. And Jesus starts out with some of those. Um, you know, we have the Beatitudes and then talking about salt and light and then talking about uh, fulfilling the law. But very quickly he gets into a, uh, a, it's a formula of you've heard it said, but I say. And the you've heard it said part, he's talking about what's normal. For instance, you've heard it said, don't murder. That's normal. If you think it's normal to murder somebody, we need to have a talk. It's not normal to commit murder. Even our fallen world understands that. That, you know, we don't like murder. Murder should be, well, it's against the law. And you spend your life in prison or such if you commit murder. And so it is the exception. And it is a bad exception. If you're thinking about actually committing murder, that's not normal. Are you angry with somebody, though? That's pretty normal. It's normal to be angry. And Jesus says, you've heard it said, don't murder. But Jesus says, but I tell you. If you have anger in your heart, you've already made the same mistake. You've committed murder in your heart against the one whom you hold contempt against. And this deep-seated anger. Now, I don't know that he's talking about getting a little bit upset because that happens. Jesus got upset, cleared the temple. Got upset sometimes with his followers. Oh, you have little faith. So we can have emotions, but are we controlled by anger? Sadly, that's pretty normal for a lot of people in a lot of instances. And Jesus says, that's not my standard. You have this standard of don't commit murder. Well, we can, 99.9% .9 of humanity can agree on that. That's normal. Jesus changes the bar. He changes the standard. And says, don't even be angry. That should be, to use the phrase, our new normal. Don't we hate that phrase now? <laughs> What's our new normal after the year and a half we've had of COVID? Well, as Christians, we're supposed to have a new normal. That's not the normalcy of the world, but is the norm, is, follows the example of Jesus himself, who purges anger, purges contempt, and as we're going to get to at the end, hatred. What about adultery? While it is far more prevalent than murder, it's still most people would agree it's wrong to cheat on your spouse. You have some exceptions that believe in the concept of open marriages and such, but by and large those are in the minority. The majority of people who get married do so with the expectation that you will be faithful to the one whom you got married to and have this exclusive relationship where you will not be unfaithful and cheat. That's normal. Everybody who gets married makes those vows, says those things. And yeah, a lot of people do break that vow. Uh, I was trying to look up statistics and they range, you know, some, some, some statistics are only about 25% of people Men, maybe 15% of women, admit to having an affair. Uh, how many more have had one that haven't, won't admit to it? That's another question. Uh, nah, who knows? 
Still, that's under 50%. So the normal would be be faithful to your spouse. And, you know, there's a, what, Ten Commandments. You know, one of them is do not murder. Another one is don't commit adultery. Well, yeah, you shouldn't do that. And we can agree on that. And Jesus says, how about lust? Here's the standard of normalcy. Here's Jesus' standard. And Jesus even says it's, it's not like one's, you know, this is excusable, this is not. He puts them in the same boat. He puts them in the same playing field. If you've done one, you've practically done the other. In our society, normal promotes lust. No. Advertisements and, I mean, for all of the movements of equality and stuff, it amazes me how much we still just excuse and shrug off as a society that just sexualizes women. And sometimes men too. They say, oh, that's fine. That's normal. Jesus is saying it should not be normal for you. Not if you're searching for this narrow way. And then he gets off of the Ten Commandments and gets into some other teachings and commandments of Scripture. One is divorce. And here's the thing. As people, that's what we are, that are living in this world of brokenness, we're going to have brokenness here too in our church family. That's why we show grace. That's why we show love and compassion and understanding. And I, and I want to do that. I want to exhibit that and not be afraid to show the times and I need your grace too. And I mess up. And that we have that atmosphere of grace. But even in the midst of the atmosphere of grace, knowing that we still struggle and stumble because we're human, Jesus is pointing, leading us, trying to teach us that for us, for believers, divorce should not be normal. It's normal in this world. 50% of marriages end in divorce. That's pretty normal. And Jesus is talking about putting away a a woman, you know. Moses even allowed it in Scripture. God allowed it through Moses to put away a woman. Jesus said, this gives your hard hearts. To just discard somebody and want something better. But that's pretty normal. A lot of people want that. Jesus is telling us, not you. You should live according to a different standard. Now, to those who are here who are divorced, and I know there are many. Again, I'm not trying to make some huge statement of who belongs and doesn't belong, because, my goodness, you're here, you want to follow Jesus, you belong. But as we teach and help and encourage each other, I want to, in all of this hard teaching of Jesus, and again, it's hard, the Sermon on the Mount is hard, I want to say, hey, we're at this normal because we are human, let's listen to what Jesus says and let's raise our standard. And it's a crazy standard. Jesus, even when talking about, you know, this idea of relationships and purity and divorce and stuff, you know, disciples said, who could even do that? If it's that hard, (laughs) then it's better to not get married at all. And Jesus said, "Eh, maybe not. You, You might be right there. It is tough. It's hard. That's the standard God's calling us to. Not the standard of normalcy we think we know. A whole new standard of living according to God's standard where you keep your vows. Oh, it's tough. And oh, we will make mistakes. And there will be broken relationships that cannot be mended. And that's part of this broken world. But the teachings of Jesus are trying to keep pulling us up and I hope we try to keep pulling us up to think differently to have a different mindset then we have oaths Jesus gets into 
how people swore by the temple and, and had these loopholes of, well, I can, I, if, if my name signed on this part of the contract, it's binding, but on this one, not so much. If I say it like this, I can get out of it. If I say it like this, well, then I can't get out of it. And Jesus says, that's nuts. I mean, that's the standard of the world. Have ways in which we don't have to tell the truth all the time. Especially if it benefits us, I can get out of that. Jesus says, let your yes be yes and your no be no. That's not very normal. Not for how the world works, but it should be our normal. And retaliation. What Adam started reading for us. The the last two sections here of chapter 5. Somebody hits you, what do you do? Well, normal, you punch them back. You hit them back. Somebody does something to you, you get them back. You retaliate. That's normal. Jesus says, don't be normal. Normal standard's way down here. It's not God's standard. You turn the other cheek and let them hit the other one too. And then here's where it starts getting crazy. It's like, I don't think that would work. Hmm? We've got to shed, again, all of our deeply ingrained ideas of what's normal and right and adopt Jesus's and give the shirt off our own back. I know that's a phrase we talk about, but Jesus says, literally, do it. Somebody asks for your tunic, you give them their cloak as well. Somebody sues you, you give them, you go the extra mile, you do extra. If somebody wants to want something, you give it. That's nuts. It's crazy. Well, Jesus is inviting us to a crazy life. And then lastly, the big one. You've heard it said, love your neighbor, hate your enemy. Jesus says, I tell you, love your enemy. And this one really, if you don't think this is the big one, then just do the last verse. Verse 48. Be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. Again, a lot of people look at that, well, that's impossible. Jesus must not really be expecting me to do it because I can't. And yes, I'm right there. I can't. I cannot be perfect. But put it in the context of, he's talking about love. We're made in the image of God. A lot of people think, well, we share free will, and in that way we you know, are with God, because the animals operate by instinct, but we operate by choice. And in that way we are special and different from the rest of the animal kingdom. When God says, in, I will make man and woman in my image, in the image of God, he created them. You know, and we share a dominion. God rules over the earth. He gave us the earth to take care of, to rule over to tend as well. So just as God's in charge, he puts us in charge. We share that as being the image of God. But I think Jesus here is telling us in Matthew chapter 5, and this part I want to read. Matthew chapter 5, the very last, you've heard it said, but I tell you. He's going to shift gears into chapter 6 and start talking about giving and prayer and worship. But in verse 43, you've heard it said, love your enemy, you love your neighbor and hate your enemy, but I say to you, love your enemy and pray for those who persecute you so that you may be like your Father in heaven. Again, he's the standard. Since he causes the sun to rise on the evil and the good and sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. For if you love those who love you, What's the big deal about that? Everybody, even tax collectors do that. Gentiles do that. But God loves even his enemies. He loved us while we were still sinful and hostile and gave his own son Jesus for us. So I think what, what I hear in Jesus' words, I'm not just made in the image of God and that God gave me a free choice. I'm not just made in the image of God that God gave me the ability to rule and have dominion as man over creation. 
He put something in me. Something that the Holy Spirit opens all the way up. And that is my capacity to love. That that's what sets us apart for the animal kingdom. And, and a dog and other, all the animals will love you if you love them. We got in a dog this week because we needed one. We show that dog love. That dog's going to love us right back. And dogs are exceptional. Even sometimes you can be mean to a dog and they'll still love you. And they're amazing creatures. I do. I, I like dogs. Cats could care less. But dogs. <laughs> dogs will love you. But God put something different in us. Not just to love as we've been loved. But to love even when it doesn't make sense. And there's no reason for it. That's God kind of love. And that's the standard he calls us to. And so the be perfect as your heavenly father is perfect is, you don't have to be perfectly smart. You don't have to be perfectly strong. Those are impossible. He's talking about love. He says you can have perfect love. You'll still make mistakes because you won't know the best way to do it all the time for sure. But you can have in your heart the standard operating level of, I want what's best for them even if they're my enemy. And I will do whatever it takes to accomplish what's best for them because I love them. God put that in us. We have that capacity. And it's the very same love God shows us. It's the... The very same spirit that rose Christ from the dead in this instance, I want to say, the very same love that God poured out onto the world is the very same love he put in me to share with you. And especially to share with my enemies. God teaches me how to do it. And that's crazy. That is crazy. Welcome to Jesus. He is crazy. He calls us to a crazy life. And, and we understand we're going to fail. We're going to fall. We're going to make mistakes. But that doesn't change the calling. He says, Colby, quit making excuses. Live according to this standard. The very standard that God himself lives by. That's the standard we're called to. And if we even pursue that, not necessarily master it, but if we are focused and pursue that with single-mindedness, we're going to look crazy, as we should, because narrow is the way. If you see that narrow way this morning and you want to take it, you see that it's only through Jesus, through surrendering yourself to Him, we offer the invitation. Because it is only through Christ. Only through the life He lays out for us to live. Only through the grace which His blood gives and pours out upon us. And if you need that or anything we can help you with, won't you come as we stand